Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and over on Facebook at Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. And we are still in that, um, I say still, um, I've made one <laughs> video about putting this journal together from 6x8 paper. And I'm loving the size of it and loving how full it's already looking. And let's finish these pages and then I'll give you a final flip through of it. So I've done um, belly band here and I just cut one of the six by eight papers from the paper pad down and rounded the corners, inked it. I need to ink the back of it too. So when I make journals, I know that there are some people who make junk journals and it's just from vintage stuff and they make very neutral colored journals neutral themed and all vintage all the time it's all everything is old looking and that is great i love those you'll find that on my channel i do a lot of scrapbook paper stuff with my journals just because that is where you know my heart is is scrapbooking uh, that's what i started out with in the late 90s <laughs> showing my age there but that's how i started off was i was a scrapbooker the traditional 12 by 12 scrapbooks i still have those scrapbooks here in the house and they take up so much space. I have not, I have not done um, one of those in a very long time. We just don't, I mean, literally do not have the room for me to do 12 by 12 scrapbooking much anymore. So um, I had to find something that I could do it on a much smaller scale. And junk journaling and making your own journals is a great way to do that because you can make them any size you want. They don't have to be um, big, huge 12 by 12 um, layouts and you can make them any size. I love making little minis and you can put little wallet pictures or whatever in them. Or if you're not into memory keeping and putting uh, pictures in yours of course you could always just do um, you know writing in them or putting memorabilia in them whatever or just making them and giving them as gifts I have many friends that love to make paper crafts but don't really use them personally at all they give them away as gifts to people at you know the holidays and their birthdays and things like that and they're not even where that they feel like they want to use them themselves and that's okay too you just do whatever makes you happy with this paper crafting world we're all a part of so i'm just cutting down some of that scrapbook paper like i said a lot of my stuff is scrapbook paper related and you know there are some that say oh no that's taboo you can't do that junk journals are all about uh, vintage ephemera and vintage papers and all that no when you make a junk journal you make a junk journal how you want to make a junk journal <laughs> it does not have to be a specific way everybody's got their own style everybody's got their own way of putting papers together and put, putting pockets together. Some people do a lot of collaging. Some people don't like collage at all and don't do it at all in their journal. So you just have to find your own way. And that is the same way with any craft that you do. There are some uh, hard and fast rules you have to go by. And then there's some things you can go, I'll do what I want to. So um, that is kind of like <laughs> me in a nutshell on everything i just kind of do what i want to do and if people love it wonderful if they don't yeah oh well sorry not sorry because <laughs> it's just me so i'm getting some eighth of an inch score tape lots of people just use liquid glue i like using score tape i have lots more control when I use score tape, then when I'm trying to drive a straight line of glue, I can't do that to save my life. So, 
I like using eight inch score tape. And we always keep score tape in stock at scrapbookingwithme.com. If you have not shopped with us, um, right now as I'm making this video, we have lots and lots and lots of stuff we just added to the um, Ease Clearance album. E, that is my mom, Edith, and she is the owner. I just help out. I'm, I'm co-owner partner, but um, she's the owner. So a lot of the stuff will say ease this and that, and that is why. And if you don't know who mom is, she is E over at Scrapbooking With Me Crafts on YouTube. All right, that one's going to be too tall. I love how I cut that, and I want to ink it and maybe decorate that up and have it for some extra journaling space. I might just put it in one of these back pockets. I'll put it right there for now. Cute. Uh, this was just made. It was a piece of the one of the die cuts from the die cuts we got in the eclip kit for January. So that's what that is, and then that was just a scrap piece of paper in my stash that I need to ink the back of too. And I just cut that down and left it as is, and it will be great journaling space for whomever later because I will be selling this journal. Yay! So I'll have this journal up on the website. So inked all around, front and back, and there's that one and maybe another little something added maybe just on there let's do best of times maybe let's do it at the bottom here a little sticker and see that's some more scrapbookish kind of stuff just adding stickers and pockets and things. All right, we need to glam this up just a little bit. We'll do some of our altered tickets. We have these tickets in the shop also, and then you can alter them like I did or leave them as is, but they were a very primary red, so I wanted to alter them. So I put some splatter ink on it and then some acrylic paint and then did a little bit of stamping on it. I think they turned out fabulous. So now let's do a little cluster of sorts on that pocket. I'm always loving to do collage and clusters and maybe this big heart here. Right there, and maybe one of these circles from Miss Betty and Renfro. Love, love, love these. I asked her for um, wood grain circles with inspirational um, words in them, and she knocked it out of the park. Oh, I like this charming. I like that. Let's see. It is big, but we can cover that pocket up. Now, I'm telling y'all, these little fruit flies, we're having a big time problem with them right now. Let's see, look, I got that one. It has not been in here the whole time that I've been prepping for this video. The second, the minute I turn on my video it comes flying around and annoying me so I'm gonna cut these out now circles can be very tricky as far as fussy cutting but I found that if you will cut the four sides of it first and then you just have the little curve to get to the other side and that is the easiest way I have ever found to fussy cut out circles. 
love doing it that way and I am not worried about it being perfect either. So I'm going to ink with my walnut stain. This is a darker brown than the vintage photo. I love it. And then ink all of our other little pieces here. Even our little sewed um, food color dyed paper strip. I have a bunch of strips like this and book page cut off some things. I have all these by my sewing machine. And then that way, when I need a little something extra on one of my pages, do I like that side or do I like that side? Ooh, I kind of like that side better. Let's do that one. So when I need a little something extra for a collage or a pocket or whatever, I do a little zigzag stitch down the middle of them and use them as a border or a tuck or just decoration. Just gives a little something something extra. And I'm all about being extra. Do it like that and then let's do maybe that. Move it down some and do it like that. <gasps> Pretty. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so bottom layers first. And then come back and add to the top of it. And then this ticket needs to go on next. And then lay it up there and try to figure out. Our heart needs to go on next because it's back behind that circle also. Okay, like that. And since we've um, done some mixed media on these tickets, it might take just a little bit to get those to lay down because they're a little warpy. Okay, and then charming down there and then we'll add some more back behind this ticket just to make sure that all the edges are laying down and smoosh everything together and there we go there are mm, did I say one maybe there's two no, there's just one. Anyway, I will um, link the other videos or a playlist of videos for this journal in the description box below. And I'll try to remember to pin a comment to the top too so you can find it that way. All right, so we got that pocket decorated and inked. And now we just need to get something to put down in it. This is pretty. Some more of my food color inked paper or dyed paper. I think maybe do it like this and then fold that piece over like that. So like a, kind of like a little homemade envelope. And put that down in there. So there's extra journaling space on those two. And then here, what are we going to do? We've got that page. I was determined in this journal that I was going to put something um, on every page. So I've got that page, that one, and that one, and that one. So we've got three more to go. Not too much left to do. And I've just torn some of the paper from the paper pad. I love a good inked and torn edge. Very cute. And then that's just a piece from my scrap pile. I love decorating with scraps. So ink 
both of those pieces and we're going to make a little side tuck but not a full page side tuck a little more decorative put glue all over the back of that piece and add it on yeah and my words are sideways I'm good with that that's the thing if you don't like how somebody has done something but they've went to the trouble of making a full video tutorial for you on how they do something just because it's not how you would do it really doesn't make sense to comment and tell them that's ugly or I wouldn't do that that way or why would you do that or I've never thought to do anything like that or you know <laughs> uh, something like that just just keep on scrolling y'all you don't have to leave the comments when you don't agree with stuff people influencers out there put out their content and work so hard on their videos and try their best and then they get downtrodden when you know, they get told their stuff's ugly or they didn't do something right or something like that. So it's just better to zip it and <laughs> go on. <laughs> anyway, so I got the little snow angels out of the die set and this little bird on a limb. I love that. Maybe like that and like that. That's very pretty. Let's go ahead and put it down before I change my mind to do something totally different. Just go ahead and put her down. Now I'll put some all the way across but not all the way to the ends since it's sticking out over it I'll hold that up so see my stuff is scrapbooky but we're making journals instead of scrapbooks traditional scrapbooks get all the excess glue off of the front and then straighten that up how I want it Okay, then I think this is thin enough. I will just do a little line down at the bottom, a little line up the back. And I'm going to leave the top open and then go pretty much all the way to the edge with that tuck and hold it down just a little bit so that it gets good and stuck and then I'm wondering that piece I put way back here you hear how crinkly those pages are yum I love that nope that's still too tall and thick for that one so We'll leave it back there no worries okay I'm gonna smush that down so that, that gets all nice and dry so now we have I said three earlier I meant four now we have three pages left to decorate and let's look through what we've got left in our paper pad I'm just gonna take out what few pages are still in here the cut aparts that are in this collection are gorgeous just a few there we go that is it um, anybody wondering or wanting any of that that is simple stories simple vintage winter woods that was our collection we used for the January e-club kit 
and I love this collection. I love this e-club kit, which I'm the one that picks out all the stuff, so I tend to love it all. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah, I love everything that we get in the eclipse kits because I pick it out. All right, I'm going to attempt to fussy cut. I'm just going to rough cut this out right this minute and then come back and fussy cut it a little bit better. See what this looks like. I might end up cutting off a little bit more of that. Let's go with a torn edge here. Okay, that's good. And I'll come in here and just fussy cut around this pine that this little birdie is sitting on. And we'll see about doing some kind of little top tuck with this one. We hadn't fussy cut out a tuck yet in this journal. I didn't want every page to look alike, but I did want the things that I put in this journal to be uniform and look good together. So some pages have things that look like something else I did. And then some pages are like, oh, you didn't do anything like that in this journal. I'm thinking also I want to do a belly band for this journal. Okay, I didn't want to go too deep into that, but I think what I'm going to do is add this. Okay, I'm going to hold it up. This is some more paper that we got in the kit. I'm going to clip that there. And then I'm going to build me out a torn piece. I'll fix the tearing once I get it off of here. Oh yeah, let's get that a little bit more jiggity jaggedy. Yes, I like that. Little something something I made up all by myself. Making something out of nothing. Some of my favorite stuff to do. Ink around this, um, what did Basil call this? Almond cream is what they call this paper. And then ink around this. I'm all for sticking with um, what you know and what you're comfortable with, but sometimes go out on a limb <laughs> and do something you're not comfortable with and, you know, see how it turns out. Ink all around that. Then we can see if there's something else we want to put back in here, maybe. But I do like that. And then that will be a tuck up there too. We can do, let's see what kind of die cuts we got left. You know, that's one thing when you're making a journal from a kit. Um, after you add your stuff to it, like my pages and my ribbon and adhesive, then you just got to figure out, okay, do I have enough stuff to make a whole journal? And we try our best with the e-club kits to give you plenty and then some to make a journal or you know up to 10 scrapbook pages or you know 
maybe up to 20 cards. Oh, I like that. And we've got a little wood, oh, a little wood snow piece. Maybe we can add that back there behind the little birdie. And that there. Oh, I like that, y'all. And we made our own little collage of stuff, and it looked like a haphazard little mess at the very beginning, but you just keep adding and keep adding, and, you know, it works itself out. It'll all work out. It'll all come out in the wash. That's what both of my grandmothers used to say. And I know y'all did that, that same saying. It'll all come out in the wash. Mama could be upset about something that I did as a little kid or something or uh, embarrassed because I didn't say please or thank you or, you know, use manners or something like that. And Mama would be <laughs> appalled, you know. And, uh, her mother, my grandmother, Swader, would say something like, oh, Edith, it's fine. She's just a little kid and it'll all come out in the wash. It'll be all right. But, of course, if I did that same stuff and Mamma Swader was the one in charge of me at the moment, she'd be just as upset as Mom was. <laughs> oh, man. She dipped snuff, of all things. And I remember one time, I was at my aunt's house, one of Mother's sisters. I was at her house. And Mama was over there, and that was my Aunt May May. That's what we used to call her. And <laughs> I got stung by a wasp. And I was sitting on May May's porch steps, just a crying my head off. It hurt so bad. And y'all, the wasp stung me on one of my inner thighs. Oh my word. It was so painful, but I, I um, couldn't have been more than six years old. <laughs> and I was crying. I mean, I was crying my head off. And Mama and May May come around. What is it, baby? What's going on? Mama said, what's wrong with that girl? And they come around the corner. And I said, I was stung me. Oh, my leg. I was so, I still remember that to this day. Oh, so upset. And maybe she was just a pet, no man pet, no man seeing where it was that I'd gotten stung. And <laughs> she said, oh, mother, it's on the inside of one of her thighs. I can't remember if it was left or right. And she was showing Mamma where it was. And May May no more got that out of her mouth than my mamma spit snuff. <laughs> and it went straight to, I mean, she was a shot, buddy. Went straight on where that wasp had stung me and the sting come out of it almost immediately. It was craziness. But I was in utter horror <laughs> that my grandmother had spat on me. <laughs> That's just how they did it here in the South. When, you know, those home remedies, that was what you was going to get whenever you were injured or needed help with something. You got a home remedy, period. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But I was. I was just simply appalled that my grandmother had spat her uh, snuff on my leg. But I'm telling you, and my, her daughter, Mamie, my aunt, mom's sister, turned, she whirled around and looked at my mom. She said, mother. And she said, what? That's what the, the child needed. So I just done what she needed. <laughs> Like, well, it works, I guess. She said, yeah, it sure does. 
That's what she needed. It took the sting out. Sting out, she said. She looked at me and she said, it don't sting no more, does it, baby? I said, no, ma'am, it don't. <laughs> and that was that. And when Mama got home from work, she got the whole story from May May. And then she did the same thing. Mother! And my mom <laughs> told her the same stuff. <laughs> and then, of course, I cuddled up to her and told her, Mamma spat on me. Well, actually, I probably said she spit on me. <laughs> and if I recall right, Mama said, well, it doesn't sting anymore, does it? It's crazy, those old home remedies that they came up with. And I mean, who would have ever thought that and come up who was the first person that come up with that hey i think if we put some wet tobacco or wet snuff on that sting that that'll all you know come out <laughs> and it won't sting anymore who who thought of stuff like that but of course i guess we have to be glad that they did think of stuff like that or we wouldn't have all those home remedies, would we? Okay, I'm going to cover the back of this just because, I mean, it's gorgeous. I've already used this side in my journal, but I'm going to cover the back just so that we have a little bit plainer of a piece back here and we can um, do some gesso on the top of this if we wanted to and have a really good place to write. But I'm going to leave all my edges as is. Figure out, ooh, if I did this side, there's more journaling space. So yeah, let's do that. And I will just ink around all the edges of this. This page is about to fall apart anyway, so it would be good if we can glue it, adhere it to something so it can have some life because it wouldn't be able to be a journal page or anything like that because it's too brittle. Put some liquid glue all over the back of it and then line it up where we want it. I know someone with the last name Ammon, so that's neat. Okay, press that down really good. And then fold that over. And then we got a nice little tuck to put in there. Let's get a little die cut of some kind. We can put it down here on the bottom. That's cute and I don't think I'm even going to ink that. It's cute as is. Pretty. Okay. Two more front and back of this one. Okay, so this cut out I mean, that's a cute saying, but I'm not really into it. So I'm going to put this down here, and then we'll add some other words and stuff to the bottom of it. And let's just make a corner tuck here. I love the, the tree line, though. That's very pretty. So let's go ahead. I like the torn. So let's go ahead and add that on there, and then we can cut around get all that off and I will ink that top and go ahead and ink the side and then we'll come back and ink the rest of it. Let's put that off to the side and put glue down here where we want that to go. If you don't like a cutout, you can alter it how you want to. Make it your own. Okay. Right along the edge there. 
Okay, I'm going to give it a minute to dry. I'll go ahead and ink what I think I'm going to put on that page or that took. We shall see once I get it cut out and looked at. Let's get my sticky scissors. This is the scissors that I use when I got something that might still have some icky glue, wet glue. I use those scissors. And they're the only ones that have little gunk on the blades. All the rest of my scissors are good. No worries with gunk on them. Okay, and dirty up that corner pretty good. I like that. And let's go ahead and round all the corners of this one. I don't think I've done an all-rounded little cut-apart tuck. Ink and ink and then ink the card. And so that'll go there. You could put one of a kind there. Like that, and it can go off to the side. I'm good with that. And we'll find a little sticker or something. My gracious, Bethany's in a room having a fit, playing a game, I'm sure, on her computer. Let's see, we'll find something else little maybe to go right there. But I like how that looks. Let's go ahead and glue that down. like that and then this one down so you can still see all the words on that and then that's cute love those little stitched hearts and that die cut pack kind of put it back behind that a little bit. Oh, that's cute. And then we can have it hanging off the edge some too. I like that. And we will put it on with eighth of an inch score tape. So this side and this side. Okay. Oh, that's cute. This is going to be one thick journal. But I love it. I love Chunky Monkey journals. Okay. And then maybe get another piece of ledger paper and put that back behind that tuck. I get my ledger paper from Walmart. It's just easy and it's very thin so it doesn't take up a lot of or make a lot of bulk in your journal. And let's just go ahead and even though I could have folded it tall if I wanted to just go ahead and do that. Oh, that's cute. All right, and then last page. And then we need to make the belly band, and I will give you final flip through. I love that paper. I love how that come out. Uh, little baby girl trying to open my door. That's that creaky sound y'all hear. Not my daughter, the Yorkie dog. <laughs> Right, one more, and let's see what we want to do here. I love that. I know that we used it in the front there, but I still love it. And then I don't want polka dot and polka dot. Let's do a torn secretarial pocket. So let's go. 
working with torn edge there. Just a rough torn edge. And I want to do it kind of like so. Maybe I like that. So then I'm going to figure out where I want this to end. I don't want it to go all the way to um, where it's touching that because then we'll have some warping and stuff. So I'm going to do me a line right there. And then I'm going to do a line right there. So that lets me know on my trimmer where I need to cut it at or line it up. So I'm just going to trust myself and line my pencil mark up with my bar and I'm just going to go for it. Okay, there's one and then we're just going to see if it worked out. <laughs> oh man, I love it when a plan comes together but Sometimes we just got to see if it works out. And one of the best ways to make sure that you're good that way is you have lines on your trimmer so you can do it that way. And then cross your fingers and your toes and your eyes. And then see, it was shorter than I wanted over here, but I'm good with that because I don't want it anywhere close to the spine. So I'm good. And we can decorate on there and ink on this. Oh, I love that torn edge. I love a free handed torn edge that gets lots of ink on the edges. Beautiful. Okay. And then same thing, eighth inch score tape. And this was those cut aparts, but I've already used the <laughs> Lila Rose, stop. I've already used the cut aparts in my journal, so I'm free to use the other side. I love how that looks. So pretty. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful torn edge. And I like that. Let's just go ahead and get that fitted in there. So let's cut it there and there. So we're, we're sticking out that way and sticking out up there. We can just use this whole Oh, let's make sure this is directional. It's directional on that side. Oh, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> we shall see anyway, huh? So cut that bottom off. And then our top piece off. I'll save that in my scrap. Okay, so people are walking that way. So yes, we're good. Oh yeah, nice big journal spot. And just um, round the corners and ink around the edges. You've got a nice journal spot there and you could cover this up on the back or just leave it as is and put a nice picture in the middle or your movie tickets or something like that if you wanted to keep that memory put that in there just like that we need to decorate up that pocket and then make the belly band okay i'm going to put that there and then i'm going to cut a little piece of this out and have it hanging over and we're going to put this little sticker, little tab sticker and I'm going to make a little background for this tab to rest on and just kind of 
can cut that out. Not too worried about what it looks like. Just as long as it'll hold my little tab. It's a little short, but I think I can cut a little of the tab off. Or I could no, let's cut it off because it'll show on the back side. Just barely cut the little pieces of tab off. Ink it. And then you've got the little tab there, just like that. And we just need glue on the bottom edge and stick it out there. I love little tabbies coming out from my pages. And then let's glue this on and we'll turn it over and glue on that back side too. I inked my circle from the digital, but then I need to ink my mixed media altered ticket and then put that on kind of at a little whopper jawed angle. And then put this on right above it. Okay, I love that. Let's scooch that on around like that. And then we can ink that tab. Oh, pretty. Okay, look how thick it is. And this is six by eight paper, y'all, and then some coffee dyed paper that I put in it for the pages. Okay, now let's do that belly band. I need to squish that a little bit. Like that. That mirrored cardstock. There I am. Ooh. Um, no makeup on. Barely fixed my hair. Glasses on. <laughs> Y'all saw me in the mirror today. Let's do a piece of this. And hmm, maybe do it about an inch and a quarter wide and do another inch and a quarter wide. Is that going to fit around if we glue those together? And bring it around town. If we were to do a this and a that and a that. Oh, yeah, it's going to fit. And we can put out some like this and let it have room to grow too. And I think what I will do is get some lace or ribbon or something and put over the top of this too. So first off, let's ink this and we're going to dress it up real, real good. And then our sheet of score tape that come with our kit. I'm going to cut me out a piece of that. To use on the end here and then see if I need to trim off some of that. Oh no, I think we are good, good to go. Good job, Melina. There, and then I'm gonna 
splice these together like so and that gives us our long arm and then get me some trim and come around like this I think what I'm going to do is attach this sari silk I'm going to sew it on to this cardstock and yep I think what I'm going to do is cut this about there and there how y'all like those precise measurements mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna sew my sari silk onto this and then I'll um, tie the sari silk in the front and this won't come you know together all the way Right, so I want enough of this off of here to tie a nice bow. So I want to come out a good, probably nine, let's go 11 inches off of this. So there's 11 inches there. And then all the way across here. Okay, and then another 11 inches there so that's where I need to chop it so I'm going to line up 11 inches on the edge here with a paper clip just to secure it on with a paper clip and then all the way across and make sure I have 11 inches here and I do pretty much and then I'll secure the other end when it comes to closures I like doing different stuff and then secure that side on with a paper clip this is some sorry silk that mom gifted me with it's so pretty it's got greens and creams and blues in it I forget where she ordered it okay then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to do a wonky little stitch um I might do a straight stitch just so that the zigzag won't catch too much of this I want it kind of flaring on the edges so I'm going to do a straight stitch maybe a couple of straight stitches on that and then come back and show you how that looks okay so there's the back side and there is the front where I've got that sorry silk and I can iron that down if I want to so it's not so crinkled up okay then and put that seam of the cardstock in the back and then bring this forward see I love that I love that kind of closure so then we just tie the sorry silk as tightly as we want we could go even tighter than what we've got it now and then we've got the sorry silk we've got the strings from sewing and there is our little closure for this journal oh i love it um that cover i think needs one of those little hearts or something and then something in the green family to bring in that sorry silk color maybe like that and and then a little dolly at the bottom that's cute so let's ink 
this docket piece and then ink this little heart and go ahead and glue it on And get just a little bit more ink on this cardstock. A little dirtier edges on it, up front at least. I love that closure. <laughs> so there is our front cover all decorated. Look at there, how chunky it is. Let's open this up and we could attach this to the back. Let's go ahead and do that. So this score tape. I got that adhered on, so see, it's not going anywhere. It's on there, but it's just a little spot about right there that I've got that glued on with. So then we can tie it up on the front. But let's go ahead and do our little flip through so you can see everything in this journal. So we open it up. We have the big pocket here. I just went ahead and put those guest tickets that I um, got all the excess ink on and altered from the last video. Just got those in there. Got that little tuck there. Got a little bitty docket just tucked back behind there. And then flip over and this is just one of those cut aparts with a docket pin to it and that's one of those tiny little Tim Holtz clips with some altered paper back behind it. Another easy, simple little pocket, but kind of almost a half page with a thumb pull in it and one of those little um, tabs, homemade tabs we made. And I just have some book page down in there that we sopped up some ink with when we were altering those tickets. And then that's one of those swirly pins that comes in the kit. I did a top tuck here with just some cardstock and stickers and this is just a piece an extra piece from my stash and I have it sopped up in there and then just barely up underneath that swirly ticket I mean pen <laughs> clip whatever it is uh, I have some ledger paper back behind this and then when you pull this pen off it, you have a fold out for extra journaling space and then just to keep it closed so it doesn't get wrinkled or anything you close it back up with that pen clip <laughs> uh, another just little corner tuck made from one of the cut aparts and then this is a belly band just did a simple little cluster and that's some of the paper I just stamped on and inked and used my ticket corner punch and here is a side tuck and I left that blank if somebody wanted to write a date or something like that on it and that's just got a little Tim Holtz picture back behind it this is probably one of my favorite pockets that I made in the whole journal so this is a piece of the cardstock from the paper pad and instead of cutting this edge off, I folded it back and just glued it at the top and the bottom, inked it, and made it a little tuck 
here's a cut apart a little tag I made so that goes into that little tuck and then this is just some leftover cardstock that I had in my stash that goes in the pocket and then the next page this is a little tuck here so if you had a little card or something you could tuck a little note or a piece of memorabilia or something like that back behind that so I left that a tuck and that's some of my um, food color dyed paper that I stitched on and this is not a tuck this is the only page that actually doesn't have anything adhered to it glued to it at all but I love these speckled pages so I didn't want to cover up all of that this is an envelope that I splattered and it comes off with that little Tim Holtz clip comes off well there's another page that does have anything on it but it's that page but it has this big craft envelope and I need to put some glue right there that glue for the envelopes coming off has this big envelope so you can put all kinds of stuff down in there if you want to and then on this side of the envelope I made this little tuck space and that's where that card sits and I just did a zigzag stitch across the bottom of that envelope just to give it some pizzazz nothing major and then I just hold the envelope on with that little tiny clip so they, that is I love that I love how that looks too cute and then this is just a torn piece of paper that I put a couple of little pieces on clustered on and got a fold up right there and then you can see this is a shorter page from all the other pages so I made a tab here so it's easy to flip and then this pocket was made really easily I just had a piece of the paper from the paper pad and I laid it just like this rounded that corner glued it on I just put glue on the page here and here and then laid that down after I'd inked it and then I cut the excess off and that made just this nice little diagonal pocket and I love that I put a piece of just book page back there and collaged on it used one of Miss Katie's doilies on the background from my tickets and here's another one of those fold out so I've got just a piece of the paper there cut down and corners rounded on it and then you come here and take off your clip and you've got another fold out and lots and lots of journaling space there and then I want to put my swirly whirly on top so let's get that paper clip working in our favor there there we go and then this is another belly band that I just put some die cuts on and then cut this down and that's a lot of journaling space there and just put that back behind that belly band here's a diagonal pocket so kind of like a secretarial pocket like we did in the back but just on the diagonal those pretty little antlers and made a little collage of stuff here put one of the cutouts there and it comes up above the pocket so that's a nice little pocket too and I just have some book page back behind that too put whatever you want to in there and then turn it over and then we've got a line of a border of the paper and then one of the die cuts and then just a little piece from my stash there perfect for journaling and then here's where we started this video we did this little pocket and did that cluster of stuff and put that paper back there behind it and then our little tuck here we don't have anything back behind that so let's do we can fold it this way let's use the polka dots 
I know why I didn't, because I was letting that dry. There we go. We got polka dots back behind that one. And then there's another one of those flip outs. And I've just got some Tim Holtz die cut back there with fold out a nice little journaling space there. I love adding extra journaling space to my journals. And then that crazy top tuck that I made with that extra journaling space. Little booklet there. One of those cutouts or, yeah, cutouts with some ledger paper back behind it and a little collage and inking. Then you've got that nice little tab there to make it easy to flip. And our torn secretarial pocket in the back there with that nice big piece of journaling paper in it. Some more guest tickets and that paper there. I'll need to ink that and did a nice little cluster there with die cuts. And then you flip it over and that's where your closure is stuck to the back. So you won't lose your closure. And then this gives room for lots of growing space y'all. So you can um, do this as tightly as you want to or as loosely as you want to. To keep all kinds of stuff in there if you need to. Too pretty. I love how that looks. Look at that. There's the top view. Side view. I love how this love journal come out. Anyway, this will be available on the website uh, at scrapbookingwithme.com. And I hope you have enjoyed this journal in the making. I love doing start to finish journals for y'all and showing how I put things together. And yeah, I'm very scrapbooky. That's why kind of my handle is called M or Me Crafty Scrapper because, you know, I'm kind of scrappy. <laughs> I go back to my roots pretty much on every project I make. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Bye, y'all.